Welcome everyone. Today I'm going to be going through some free NES setup in relation to Plex Media Server and MB Media Server. So the first thing you're going to want to do is navigate to your free NAS management portal and it can be done by typing the IP address of your free NAS server. So I'm going to go into here, 192. Now mine is 192.168.1.191. Um, and we're logging in and it will take you to the system page when you first log in and you can see here the host name is freenas.local now that's critical um, and I would recommend leaving it as the standard setup um, because it becomes it's something easy to remember and you can easily get to the management services and your shares by using this local host name. Now most people who are familiar with FreeNAS would understand that you, when you first install FreeNAS you have the option to run the wizard. Um, that's good for beginners such as myself um, and I would recommend it for most people that are using FreeNAS for the first time. Now what that does is it sets up your volumes and your, sh your initial share now that can be done afterwards as well. Now, just to give you an idea of what a free NAS looks like in regard to storage, you can go to your storage tab and you can view your disks. Now, I have here my main boot drive here. Now, I tried to use flash drives and I found the boot time to be extremely long and unreliable for any particular reason. And I've used a number of different brands of flash drives, SanDisk, Lexa, so on and so forth, and they all gave me the same issue. So I resorted to a full SSD and I can boot the system in under a minute and a half. You can see I've got six two terabyte drives attached to this server. Now these are arranged in what FreeNAS calls a volume. So you can see here, I've called it NAS volume for my own benefit, and that was a bit of um, on my behalf, I, I made the decision to that. Most people, and they recommend it calling a tank, and that does have a weird reference to the Matrix movies apparently, but I don't know what the source of that is, but apparently it is. And only that NAS volume, you'll see a data set called NAS, and that's created when I created my share. It's all done automatically. I didn't have to do it by myself. So when setting up a share, you go to Windows Share and you add a share using this button here. I'm not going to do it here because I've already done it. Now clicking on this you can edit the properties and you can see advanced mode. Um, I don't use, apparently you're not supposed to use this home share because that actually enforces usernames and passwords. Um, you can see this is where I set my name. Apply default permissions. So I didn't apply default permissions. I set it to a no password policy which is called nobody and I'll show you where that can be done it happens when you set it up you set the policy I can't see it from here um, it's browsable to network clients and I've allowed ga guest access that's critical um, for Samba shares um, I don't really understand too much about this area here so I just left that all as default and I'm going to just cancel out of this so when I go to my back to my storage and I click on my NAS share or my data set, I can see the permissions here and you can see here this is where I've got nobody. That is not the default again. The default is root. Now I don't know what root means or what it does, but for my purposes, um, by setting it to nobody, that means despite that I've got a guest access, it means that I can actually still navigate it to it. Um, through some applications without requiring a password. Um, so I've just got one big share taking up the whole thing. And you can see I've got here 1.7 megabytes used in that NAS. Um, and there's some other storage used for obviously for um, 
something else. So I've got MB 1.3 gigabytes and Plex server. So the total volume I've got used is 2.4 gigs, but in the NAS drive, in the share, I've got used 1.7 megabytes. Now, I can navigate to that, and it's important to test this on your local Windows network. So to test that, I can go to just open up a file explorer. Um, I'm just going to delete this. because I want to show you how to do this. So PC, I'm going to disconnect. So I want to show you actually how that's done. Delete. Okay. So to test the share functionality, you can just type in the host name and that would be backslash backslash as a network location and free as. Now that will automatically take you to the top parent and within there you can see the NAS share. Now within NAS share I can create folders which I've done here, media, and you can paste your various media files into this and it's important to test that you can actually do that and you can also then also read so moving files in and moving files out and actually playing those files so that just proves that we've got all the required permissions the other way you can do navigate to this directory and I'll just close this again reopen you can use the IP address the same as we did before to navigate to the free NAS portal so it's the same thing 192.1968.1 we can copy that now I don't want forward slash I want backslash and once again we get to that top parent directory but I wouldn't recommend using the IP address to map your drives or to navigate to them because your NAS may change its IP address if there's a conflict or so on and so forth. So the local host will always be able to be accessed. Now, the easiest way to make sure that you can access these shares all the time is you can map a drive or we can add a network location. Is it, I do both because some software packages work with one and not the other and vice versa so to map network drive we go map network drive we're going to call it n so this gives you a physical drive that you can then share so it's got some flexibility to it so again backslash free NAS and then we can browse now I don't want to map the parent I want to map my share so now I can see a mapped network drive and I can share that further but I don't know why you would because um, then you would actually have multiple shares mapping to the same data the other option is to add a network location and this is a very similar process. In fact, it's exactly the same. Browse. Um, and I'm just going to simply call it S. So you see it looks slightly different. One is a network location shares as a folder and the other one's a drive obviously showing as a network drive. Okay. And we can also pin these to a quick access, which is also good. So they're nice and easy to get to. And we should be able to play those files etc. 
Right. Now, so we've got our share set up. We've got data in those shares. So how do we push that out via devices that can't access a Windows SMB share, such as iOS devices? Um, typically they use, you can use VLC or any other type of iOS application or, or Google Play Store application, any other media player, Windows Media Player access, um, you can access uh, DNL servers from those devices. Um, so what we want to do is install a DNL, DLNA server. So FreeNAS comes with some plugins. There's a number of defaults which we'll just wait to load. Now the two we're interested in is Envy and Plex Media Server. They essentially do the same thing. Some have Plex Media has some benefits over in being in some areas and vice versa. So I actually use both. Um, now to install these you simply click on them and install them. And once you click on them, you've got the install button down there. Now, the first time I installed Plex in EMB, I did get an error. So it's important to let it go for its full, complete cycle before you even think about touching it. And it can take quite some time, probably 15 minutes. You can see now I've got installed plugins. And when you install a plugin, these services are off. I recommend you keeping these off until you've set up your jails and your jail storage. And again, once you install the plugins, the plugins automatically set up the jails. So we can navigate to those jails and you can see the IP addresses of those jails. Now we can navigate to them directly from Firefox or any other web browser if you happen to know the port name, the port number. So the port number is the number after the IP address. <clears throat> now, once you see, once you first install the plugin in the jails, there's no storage attached to them. So down here you can see, when you click on them, on Plex server, you'll see these tabs appear down here. Now what you want to do is add storage. You can do it from this menu option as well, but this is probably the most straightforward because you, this is a bit harder to navigate. We can also edit here. It doesn't really show much though, but we can change the IP address if you so choose. Um, and I wouldn't recommend changing any sort of permissions or anything like that. Just leave it all as standard. Once you've, once you've added your storage, it'll ask you f for some uh, basic information. And the way you can get to that information is once the initial storage comes up. Basically what you'll see is this menu. And you want to not change anything up here. And you want to, this source will be blank. So you'll browse to this and you'll be in this default menu. It'll be blank. I'll just blank that out and you'll basically just see this mount and then you'll navigate to your share that you've created. So we want the top level and then you see the mount, the volume and the share or the data set. Okay, it's actually a data set as opposed to a share but it's the same for my purposes I refer to it as the same. Now the destination is where the jail or the plugin will be able to see that data and map it etc so if you destroy the plugin or the jail by accident or on purpose your data doesn't go anywhere it stays in the same location it's just like a redirect if you like now this was the part that threw me and i couldn't find anything on this at all in the forums um, they all said map it to the medium directory map, map it to the media directory but it was unclear because they also tell you to use a media directory in your share so it was really unclear now 
what it normally comes up with when you first go into this directory is you just see this as a blank and you'll see all this all these subdirectories which are actually the directories created when you've installed the jail and the plugin so the recommendation is that you do use this media file and it's the top level media file okay so it's very very simple for slash media okay close I'm going to cancel out of this create directory it won't create a further directory and you want to make sure that the tick is mounted but that's also done by default when you're normally setting up this from the first time so again the source is where your data is where your files is are and this destination is within the plugin itself because the plugin can't access the share directly so you need to redirect the plugin to your share and that's essentially what this does now once you set up your storage and I'll just have a quick look at the ambi storage as well and it's exactly the same setup it's identical so you using the same data paths for both media servers because most media services will be streaming the same media just cancel out of that now I won't go into templates configuration because that doesn't really have anything to do with what you you need for your MB or Plex servers now once you've got all that set up you want to go back to your plugins go to installed and activate the service just by clicking on it okay what's that done? you can't directly get to the plugin interface from this top menu as far as I'm aware you have to go down here expand the plugins directory click on Plex it will open this box it will initially be unticked so you need to tick it and then up here it will give you access to your Plex media server, server portal it will open up a web link to it and you can notice that Plex uses port 32,400. Okay, so you can make this, you can add this to your favorites, etc., and you can sign in. So you need to have a Plex account. So. I'm just going to stop recording for a moment.